Hello everyone. I am here to talk about my six most favorite herbs out there. And this is really hard for me because if you follow me on Instagram or you've seen some of my other YouTube videos, you'll know that I am passionate about herbs. As a holistic health practitioner and I've taken countless herbalism classes, Herbs are something that are such a huge part of my life and my family's life, and it's because I feel the benefits. They are so incredibly nutrient-packed, and I think a lot of people just are very unaware of how incredible they actually are and, and what is actually in these incredible plants that we can benefit from. So I just wanted to share with you guys today the six that I will always have in my home apothecary. And I have a lot more than six, but, but these are the ones that if I were to recommend, and this is a question that I get a lot, if I were to recommend just a few that you should have at home, these would probably be it. There's a few that, oh, when I was going through all my herbs and I was like, oh, I should add this one in. And, um, you know, it's, it's hard. There are so many incredible herbs out there, but I found these to be the most versatile. And these are ones that I use with my family as well. So, so you know, uh, a lot of these are, are safe to use with your children. You know, I'm 33 weeks pregnant and most of these I drink through my pregnancy as well. So they're just very versatile powerhouse herbs that I definitely would not be without. So I'm gonna work through these very quickly. Now, there's a few reasons for that. Um, a few of these I've already made videos on specifically to this one particular herb, and I will link it in the description below, and I'll also try to put you know one of those little links up above when I talk about it so that you can visit it and get more detailed information about it. I'm gonna try to make this short. What I'd like to do is just tell you these herbs tell you why they're my favorites, and then you run and do the research on whether you think they will be beneficial for you and your family. Now, with that said, I'm not a doctor, so when you do that research to see if they will be beneficial for you and your family, please research the safety of them. Um, you know, I'll say that I take this when I'm pregnant or I'll take this when I'm breastfeeding and, and you know, that's my own personal comfort level with these herbs, but please find your own comfort level with them. And, um, you know, you can always check with your healthcare provider and things like that, but um, this is just my opinion and, um, Please do your own due diligence and research before taking these herbs and integrating them into your life. So the first one that I would not be without is rooibos. And you may not recognize it based on how I'm pronouncing it. It is a South African tea. It is pronounced rooibos, but it is spelled R-O-O-I-B-O-S. Um, it is a red tea and it is incredible. You may have seen it in um, tea mixtures as an alternative for a black tea or um, even a green tea at times. A lot of times they substitute this as a decaf version for chai uh, only because it has a very robust kind of nutty flavor that can replace a strong black tea. Um, it also is a great replacement for coffee. And that is why I originally had gotten into it because I wanted to find something that was not caffeinated, something that was not acidic, and something that I could drink while I was pregnant. And this fit the bill. It has a very robust flavor to it, and it can be made into a latte. It can be done, you know, just about any way that any coffee drink or a strong black tea could be made because it has that um, strength of flavor to it. It is delicious. I just love it. Now, I did make a video on this one and um, I'll go ahead and link it. Visit that video to get more detailed information on this tea because uh, it really is an amazing powerhouse of a tea that I use as a base for all the mixes of tea that I make, pretty much. Whether I'm pregnant or not, breastfeeding or not, it's so versatile. Um, I give it to my children. It's been used for thousands of years as um, a, you know, a, a tea that you can use to settle children's stomachs and aid in digestion. It has this beautiful red color that you can see. It's from 
uh, a red bush. It is a fantastic antioxidant and anti-inflammatory. It has calcium, manganese, and fluoride, which make it great for bone health as well. Like I said, it helps in digestion and heart health. And, um, and it is wonderful to use for, for you know, children and, and adults as a, a alternative to something that is um, caffeinated. It is incredible and a great base to kind of cover up some maybe other teas that you might mix in with it that don't have as appealing of a flavor and i'm actually going to get to a couple of those here in a minute okay the second one is oat straw and it is exactly what it sounds like it is straw and it's just a very light um tea that doesn't have much of a flavor if you were to imagine what straw tasted like that is what this tastes like so again this would be great with rooibos and actually i do mix this with rooibos almost every day um, i have a basic tea that i make with a mixture of a few of my favorites and then i add in different teas based on what i feel like i need that day and my base is usually rooibos and then i always add in oat straw now, oat straw is a very powerful nerving. And what that means is it helps with settling your nerves, settling anxiety, um, calming you down in general, just um, any sort of nervous, anxious tension that you might feel. Oat straw is really great at mellowing that out, but it does it in a very gentle way. This is something that I take when I'm pregnant, but that is one of the many benefits of oat straw. It's also very rich in antioxidants, photonutrients. It has fiber and calcium. Uh, it also has potassium and vitamins A, C, and B. It really is just a powerhouse herb, and I take it every single day. I drink it at least once or twice a day, and I, I make an infusion of it every night, uh, along again with my rooibos, and, and it's just so full of great minerals and nutrients that um, it's one of those teas that I just, again, could not be without ever. So the third herb that I would never be without is stinging nettle. And a uh, little side note on stinging nettle, the plant actually does sting you. People are, say that because it is so rich in nutrients, it is such an incredible herb, such an incredible plant, that it has this self-defense mechanism to keep animals and people from eating it as much. Um, obviously, it can be harvested with gloves, but it does have a sting to it. Um, if you were to grow it yourself. This is one that I have been wanting to grow myself for, for years, but I'm going to wait until my children are older because I know they will want to touch it just out of curiosity. <laughs> it's probably something they would only do once though. Um, but stinging nettle is absolutely amazing. You might have heard of it already if you're pregnant or you've had a child. Uh, traditional medicinals, they make amazing uh, bagged teas that are organic and they um, include stinging nettle in their uh, pregnancy tea. I think it might even be in their breastfeeding tea as well. It's just a overall incredible, very um, nutrient dense herb that is the third component to my normal daily mix, which is rooibos, oat straw, and stinging nettle. And those are the three that I drink every single day. And then I'll just add in different stuff as I feel I need it. But because of how nutrient dense this is, I wouldn't miss a day with it. This tea has such an incredible high mineral content, iron, phosphorus, potassium, calcium, manganese, magnesium, copper, and then on top of that, vitamin A, C, K, and B. And then you have the phytonutrients. You have chlorophyll, you have beta carotene, you have amino acids and folic acids as well. So you can see why this would be a great tea for everyday use, as well as a great tea for adding in when you're pregnant and when you're breastfeeding to replenish all of those vital nutrients. Um, I'm glad that traditional medicinal has that in their pregnancy tea as well. But this is one that is just amazing. It is so packed with good stuff. So this fourth tea is one that is such a comforting tea for me. 
just the smell of it, I'll walk by and I'll open it up and smell it and it just makes me happy. And that is chamomile tea. And it is also such a beautiful tea as well. It smells incredible. So these little yellow flowers aid in digestion and they are a main component in gripe water. If you were a mom, you might have heard of that, which um, a lot of women give to their newborns to help settle their immature stomachs. You know, babies are generally are born with stomachs that aren't really ready to digest a lot of the proteins that they're faced with whether it be through breast milk or through formula when they are born. And so they get um, a lot of gas and distended stomachs and get gripe water works so well with that. And it's generally just a chamomile tea, um, sometimes mixed in with a few other herbs, but chamomile being the base of it because it really does settle down your stomach. It is also really calming. It is such a calming herb. It aids in, in um, anti-anxiety, anti-depression, it aids in sleep, though I, when I drink it during the day, it does not make me tired, it just kind of mellows me out. Now, I just wanna warn you with chamomile, um, a lot of times they say not to take it when you're pregnant because there are some people who do have some pretty dramatic allergic reactions to it as part of the fever few family and um, and that will you know cause some complications in your pregnancy if you do have a severe allergic reaction to it so you know again like I said before do your due diligence before you start taking um, different herbs based on where you are in your life if you're pregnant trying to get pregnant breastfeeding that kind of thing because you know you never know how your body is going to react to these most people do great with chamomile I have um, very seldom come across someone who has any sort of reaction to chamomile, but something to test. Um, it is a wonderful herb otherwise, and definitely one that I would not want to be without. And the fifth, and many of you have probably heard of this, especially if you're a woman, red raspberry leaf tea. And this is another ingredient, the main ingredients in traditional medicinals, um, pregnancy tea. And there are a number of reasons why this particular herb is so amazing for women's health. So it is not only a, a, a detoxifier, but a very gentle detoxifier, something that is gentle enough for you to be able to take while you're trying to get pregnant, pregnant, breastfeeding, and anytime. A lot of women take this because it is a great uterine toner and strengthener, which is not only great for when you're pregnant, but is great for when you're trying to get pregnant, especially with the detoxifying aspect to it, because it's supposed to help your body detoxify well enough so that you're um, more easily able to get pregnant. Um, also toning and strengthening the uterus will help with that as well. The detoxifying, a lot of people think will help with um, keeping uh, miscarriages at bay, uh, it helps kind of regulate hormones. It is overall such a wonderful herb for women's health. I love the look of this herb and the feel of it. It's kind of fluffy and it is high in magnesium and iron, potassium, vitamin B and C. And to take it even further with women's health, when you are in labor, it is supposed to help with um, contractions, making the contractions stronger and more productive. Uh, a lot of women are afraid of drinking it during their pregnancy because they think, wow, if it helps my contractions be more strong and productive in labor, then should I worry about it causing contractions when I'm not due yet? But um, it, it's not known for doing that. That's why it is one of the main components in um, traditional medicinals pregnancy tea and definitely uh, recommended throughout pregnancy to help strengthen your uterus because it's not going to actually cause contractions. It's just going to help them along when they're already started. And the last, and I'm almost out of it because I use the heck out of it, is astragalus root. And this is a root um, that has been used in traditional Chinese medicine for thousands and thousands of years. This particular root is probably one of the most powerful herbs I've ever encountered. There are quite a few out there and you know that's not to belittle the herbs that I've mentioned here um, prior to this, 
but this one is it sticks out because of all the health benefits that it has. It is a, a huge immune boosting herb and that is what drew me to it initially. It is an anti-aging herb. In traditional Chinese medicine it is known for an herb that helps keep you young and helps keep you living a long healthy life. Um, you know anti-cancerous um, improves heart function, improves liver function, kidney function. I don't think there's anything that this particular root doesn't touch. And that's why it's just been known for being that um, a, a, a long life herb. It is such an incredible herb. I integrate it into so much of my life and my family's life. I mean, I even make our almond milk with it. Uh, I use a tea instead of just water. And actually, I'm going to link the video that I've made on astragalus tea. So I'm not going to get too much into it, but I describe how I make this almond milk out of astragalus tea so that my family also gets the benefits of this incredible herb. Um, especially during this time of year, we're just now entering fall where all those nasty bugs are starting to come out and uh, we're just trying to boost our family's immune system. Most of these teas can be very easily purchased at your local apothecary or herb shop. Uh, some of them, chamomile, uh, rooibos, of course, um, red raspberry leaf, all of those you could probably find at Whole Foods or our uh, Vitamin Cottage or, or somewhere local like that. I know that even Walmart has traditional medicinals now and they have their own um, individual teas for stinging nettle and chamomile. I buy them in bulk from a local herb shop, but I, when, when they're out of stock of some of the stuff that I need, I go to Amazon and I can buy huge bags of the herbs in organic. I have a couple companies that I really, really like. Um, I'll go ahead and link those in the description below so that you can uh, see the companies that I feel comfortable with. They sell organic and, um, and just very, very clean herbs. So a brief side note on how I prepare my teas because I do get this question a lot. You should have like a tea kettle or you can have an electric tea kettle, which is actually what I use. I find that to be so much easier. It just takes like two minutes to heat up my water. And then I use a French press and I put my bulk herbs, you know, the loose leaf herbs in the bottom, whatever mix it is that I use. Like I said, I usually use rooibos, oat straw, and stinging nettle as base. And then I add in anything else that I feel like I need and pour in the boiling water and let it steep for a few minutes. Or I also a lot of times make infusions. So I make one of these every night. I put in my herbs, I put in boiling water, and I close it up and put it in the refrigerator. In the morning it's cold and it has steeped all night long. So it is a great infusion. And then you can put it in your French press to get out all the, the herbs in it. And then I use that throughout the day in my water. It is a lot more concentrated than you'd get from a normal tea. So I like to dilute it in my water and that way I'm getting a lot of water as well. So that's it, it's super easy. I mean, you spend maybe $15 on an electric tea kettle, maybe another 10 or $15 on a French press, and then you can buy whatever herbs you want in bulk and very, very easily make your own teas make your own infusions and uh, and have them available whenever you want. It's a lot cheaper to buy them in bulk too. And if you end up loving herbs as much as I do and feel the benefits as much as I do, then you'll probably want to buy them in bulk. <laughs> because I know my family goes through a lot of herbs. So I hope this has helped you. Like I said, I tried to keep this short without going into too much detail. I could talk for days about herbs. Um, and, and so many other herbs that are out there that are so incredible, but trying to narrow it down for you to the ones that I would say you should probably start off with, it would be these six. Again, do your due diligence to make sure that these herbs are what's right for you. Um, but these are the ones that personally I would not be without. They've done so well for my family and I hope they do well for yours as well. So. Thank you so much for your time and until next time, be well.